And we are back for more Summer League fun. We got even bigger contests tomorrow. 25K to first in the big tournament. We also have a twenty or $222 tournament, 10K to first as well. I'll be in both of those. So excited for that. Um, welcome, guys. My name is DK. Uh, as I said, we'll be talking about some Summer League DFS in this video. Um, the sponsor of the video, that would be Prize Picks. If you guys are not on Prize Picks, you can use code DKDFS for 100% match up to $100. It'll be linked down below. They do have Summer League stuff. Nothing on the board yet. That The board usually released tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, again, player prop site where you, mix, you can mix and match sports. Uh, you can build anywhere from up to six players in one slip and come up to 25 extra money. So if you guys want to give it a try, you can use the code, again, DKDFS for that 100% match. It'll also be linked down below. And if you're looking for premium content for either DFS or for price fiction, check out my Patreon. Um, if you're playing Summer League DFS, um, I'll offer a ton of stuff. Basically, I'm, I am, uh, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm basically working. So um, whether it's, uh, you know, posting projected starting lineups, so player pools, roster construction videos, um, answering questions, doing live streams, um, posting every single piece of news possible. Um, that's all on Patreon if you are interested. If you want that edge for Summer League, um, again, linked down below. Okay, so before we get into the tilt, and yes, there will be a little bit of tilt. I had an extreme tilt last video. If you're interested, I had to put the tilt warning in there. Uh, so, great. But first, before, before we do that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, the support has been really overwhelming of late. Um, I went on the uh, RPS uh, live stream today, and I, I saw a lot of the comments in the stream. I uh, saw a lot of some of the comments also after uh, on the, in the video. So I just wanted to say, like, thank you. Like, that, that, that does mean a lot. I know it's... it's it's kind of crazy for like all I do. I'm I'm just a crazy guy that builds and talks DFS, and you guys support me. So just like I just wanted to say thank you. That was that was really cool to see uh, during the stream. I saw a lot of your guys' comments. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks again. That that definitely made my day. Uh, Summer league, it's fun, but like man, it's it's like again, like it's my day is I wake up, I wait for the summer league prize tricks prize picks board to drop and then i have to go like super fast because stuff will get bumped really quick um and then i gotta start working on the dfs stuff and then i gotta come back and, and answer questions and then i gotta post all these projected lineups and then i gotta you know post for the early i gotta be in the discord all day long answer questions. it's just like it's non-stop work stress but uh seeing all those comments really did make my day so thanks again guys and all right so that out of the way now let's get to the tilt and the recap so I think I made probably the worst 2v2 swap um, known to man possible. Yeah. I Mistakes were made. So here's where I was at. This is my lineup, okay? Um, so I'll bring it up. I have it in my phone right now. So I was going into the late game. Um, I had Hudgens, uh, Sebron, Zaire Smith, which just don't get me started on the minutes there, man. Don't get me started on the minutes for him. Like, why did he play the least out of it? Oh, that, that's one thing, okay? But I had AJ Williams, who I, I posted. So once we got the Thunder news, Thunder news was huge, right? Um, and I said, all right, KJ Williams is your safest bet. And I post a lot of, you know, these guys like G, either G League stats or college stats. Just so everyone kind of had was familiar with those Thunder guys that were in the starting lineup. Um, yeah, I had Hudgens who smashed. Sebron is really good. Smith was a boss, but barely played. KJ Williams absolutely smashed. A absolutely smashed. I can't talk now. Um, Darius Days. What were those minutes? How did the faders know? I mean, he was almost 100% owned in, in, the, in high stakes stuff, as he should have been. Um, how did they know he would barely play in the starting lineup? What was that? I want to know if you faded Darius Days. How did you know? Hey, let me know in the comments. If you faded Darius Days, how did you know? But okay, so that I had that plus Shane Sharp who did salvage, right? So I'm looking at him like, all right. I was kind of fringe, money line, like, like probably 10 points back of the money line. I had two players left, okay? I had the Spurs uh, champagne, champagne, however you pronounce his name, and I had Ford for the Kings. I talked about that even in the, in the RPS live stream. Talk about how he was my favorite because I knew he'd be the lowest owned. I'm looking at that. I'm like, okay. I think I have to pivot off Spurs Champagne, Champagne, right? I think he's going to be popular. That I really did think he was going to be a pretty popular play for for the Spurs, right? Because he was absolutely smashing, even with Wemba Yam, and he had one bad game when Victor played. 
And so this is what I did. I pivot off Spurs, Champagne, and I pivot off Jordan Ford, the Kings, and I pivot to Dalen Terry. And Probably the worst 2v2 possible, right? Like, I am... Oh, I'm so dumb. I wouldn't have taken down, but I think I would have gotten... I would have won like four hundred dollars or something. I would have uh, I would have over uh, uh, um, min cashed in the one hundred and eighty. But and then then to top it all off, I checked the ownership. No one played the Spurs Champagne. Like no one played them. It was like eight percent owned. If I just kept that with board from the Kings, I would have won big. I outsmarted myself. I pivoted to Dalen Terry. Who I'm just. I think I haven't, I haven't shot a basketball in three years, and I honestly think I am a better player than Dalen Terry. So that was how my... Oh, oh, okay, so there's that. Right, There's that tilt. How about prize picks again? I, I told you guys I went 3-1 and one yesterday. I went 4-1 and one on my summer league plays today. I've lost money again. It's just the way that prize picks releases the plays. Of course, the first game was the Bucks and Rockets, and they released... Beauchamp and Mannion, who I absolutely nuked their under points. Um, Beauchamp didn't score. Mannion had four points. And the only other pair that I had with it was Cam Whitmore, who we got really good value on. It took us over 17 and a half points. Um, Prize picks still posted Jabari Smith and Tari Eason props. They didn't know that those two were out. Um, and, and Whitmore got bumped all the way to 20. Want to know, know what Whitmore finished with? Finished with 16. 34 minutes. Couldn't hit a shot in the second half. I expect to be a brutal game. This this is a little bit uh, this is a little bit just out of this world, man. Seven and two, and I have now missed every slip because the I, I have a lot like, like my sharp one that hit. I had him paired with Kamara, who we also got great value with. He took us over 12 and a half. He got bumped to 14 and a half. Random DNP. Going a little bit crazy over here, guys. I'm prize picks. I'm going a little bit over. I'm going a little bit crazy. This cannot happen again. It cannot happen again. I cannot go. I'd be hitting at like a 75% clip and hit no slips. Missing everything. I had the two bucks in different slips paired with Whitmore. I'm just like, ah, oh, really mad. I'm really mad. Okay. So I had to get that tilt out of the way. I got to vent. All right. At least I'm, I'm a little bit crazy. You guys don't know that. I, I got to vent this. I got to vent. Doing this all day and then finish. I take the worst possible 2v2 swap to cost me like 400 bucks. And then the prize picks up again. I just get screwed with, with one miss. Cost me all, all my slips. Okay. Well, enough of that. Let's now get in the video again. 25k to first. Big, big money. So pretty important news here for the Thunder, which I am surprised about, is this. I'm not sure if, if, if everyone caught this, but NBA TV continues to say that Shet and company besides Trey Mann and J-Dub, are not shut down for the Summer League. We expect them to play tomorrow. That surprised me. Usually when, when, when you know, these second and third year guys miss a game, they're done for the rest of the Summer League. But it sounds, at least right now, that the Thunder guys, besides J-Dub and Mann, are going to play. Let's talk this through where I think the starting lineup's going to go. So assuming that they're right, I think they're going to go Chet, uh, Wallace, um, Jang, um, Jalen Williams, the big, and probably Shackelford as the other guard. I mean, I guess they could throw Butler in the starting lineup too. Actually, no, they're going to go Butler. Never mind. I, I think they're going to go Butler. Um, Butler didn't play last game too, but they didn't have him as listed out. So I think actually that's going to be the starting lineup. I think it's going to be Wallace, Butler, um, Jang, Chet, Jalen Williams. Um, so with that being said, at the top, you got shot at 10-4. I think it's a solid spend up. Here's the issue. There's not a lot of value on it. Um, so it's going to be a little bit tough to get to these topping guys unless, unless like one of these teams rest all their guys like the Thunder did tonight, which is definitely possible. Um, so, yeah, shot at the top. If you can afford them, I think it is a decent play. Again, no J-Dub, no Trey Mann. Um, Case and Wallace had a solid game one, not so much game two. 8.9K. I think I would rather play Jared Butler, assuming Jared Butler starts. 
Um, so I'm going to for Butler to Wallace at the price points. And then Jane got a price increase to 7.6. I still think he's a reasonable play. I think the big Jalen Williams is fine at 6.3. So I think my favorite point per dollar play to the Thunder would probably be Butler and Jalen Williams. Um, and then off the bench, I was really shocked that Keontae Johnson did not start. Um, I thought for sure he would start. Uh, uh, yeah, he did not. But he still had a decent game off the bench at 5K. He's a value play I would have some interest in. I would assume you still get probably Shackelford playing some solid minutes off the bench. He didn't have the best shooting game, but did have 19 shots up. So that's good to see. So um, if the Thunder, if this quote is right, and those are the five starters, then again, I think off the bench, I have interest in Johnson and Shackelford probably. And Zaire Smith, like barely playing, like seven, like, come on, man. You start him and you play him 17 minutes in a nine-man rotation. What are you doing? What are we doing? Oh, all right, let's move on to the Pacers. So I'm going to say this. I'm worried about the Pacers. Also, we have an early slate tomorrow, which, by the way, I do break down the early slate. Um, we give all the updates and everything over on Patreon if you guys are interested in that. We have, we have an early slate, 5K to first. That means that this game is not the first game of the night. So there's a pretty good chance we don't get news for Locke which is going to be really, really stressful because I would, in my personal opinion, I give it about a 50-50 chance that Mather, Nemhar, Jackson play. I think there's, 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 it's about a 50% chance they, they play versus get shut down for the summer. So it's really tough because the Pacers run a really tight rotation, and if they do play, one of these guys at least are going to absolutely smash, right? So I'm, just all, I'm already stressed about it. Of this. Like I'm stressing about this the night before because I know this is something that we're most likely not going to get news before lock. And then you have to make a decision on what you want to do with the Pacers. You either, you know, take a risk for one of these guys or you just avoid them and go from there. But yeah, Matherin, Nemhard, Jackson all look good. Like I said, they're running a super tight rotation. Nemhard and Matherin should play 30 plus minutes. Jackson, a minutes went down a little bit, but still he's well north of fancy point guy. So those three look really, really good. Um, Jarris Walker um, has played 30 plus minutes back to back games. I will say, honestly, he's probably the safest. I'm sure he won't be shut down. You never know. You never know. But like, I would think if, if Indiana's going to shut down anyone, it's going to be Mather, Nemar, and Isaiah Jackson. So um, I guess, you know, Jarris Walker, safe for that reason. I'm, I'm more confident that he plays. Um, ben Shepard, the rookie, has been starting. Um, he had a little bit of a bounce back game last game. I think he's reasonable there at 5.8K. And then here's another, here's another way you can play it, right? So if I was building a ton of lineups and we didn't get news before lock for the Pacers, I would definitely mix in some of these bench guys, right? And, and hope that they shut down the main guys and we don't get that before lock. So like an Oscar, I don't know how to pronounce his, his last name, but I would think he would start at the five if Isaiah Jackson does not play. So he's a sneaky value. I think a guy like Kendall Brown would most likely move in the starting lineup if Matherin doesn't play. He's somewhat sneaky. You have uh, King and um, Wong, two rookies that you know haven't been playing a ton, but they would get a pretty big bump in minutes if a lot of these main guys sit. So there's two different ways you can go about this for the Pacers um, if we don't get news before lock, right? You can play the main guys, and, and or there's three different ways. There's play the main guys, and just hope they play if we don't get news before lock. Again, this is assuming we don't get news before lock. You can just avoid them and just go elsewhere and just, you, know, you don't want to take that risk. Or you can honestly play some of these cheaper guys and hope that the Pacers shut down their main guys. And then you get these guys at low ownership. So there's a lot of game theory that goes into Summer League DFS. And you have to get a little bit lucky, right? You do. But... Like I said, if I was building 150 lineups and we did not get Pacers news, I would have definitely some lineups with these main guys. And I would also have some lineups with bench guys and hope that they get shut down. New York and the Magic, I mean, it's Nick's rotation, man. Like, I just... What are they doing? I was so... Ugh. DFS is just so tilting, man. It is so incredibly tilting. So... Game one for the Knicks, I was incredibly high on Jalen Martin, right? I said, he's my favorite value for the Knicks. I'm the most confident in his minutes. Well, he did not start, played 26 minutes off the bench, and he busted. 
And then we don't get the Knicks starting lineup before lock. The next game, he starts, plays 34 minutes, and absolutely smashes. Can't make it up. Come on, man. Like, really? That's just that's salt in the wound. Start him, and he smashes. But when I was all over him, game one of the early slate, they run some random starters. Like, get out. Oh. Mad, right? I'm always mad. I, I am. Right? I'm always tilted. But Isaiah Roby, he's been absolutely awful. I mean, how, he's supposed to be the there. He's supposed to be the backup to Julius Randle this year. He cannot be doing this in the summer league. Like Roby, a couple years ago, was putting up huge numbers for the Thunder at the end of the year. But like I don't know what's with Isaiah Roby. Also, Daquan Jeffries got injured. He did not play last game. We'll keep on his news. Um, he's another vet. Um, so we'll monitor that. Heels. I don't understand his minutes. I really don't. I, I don't know. This is what I'm saying. I don't know what the Knicks are doing here. Because if you guys played previous year's Summer League DFS, the Knicks always gave their you know, young draft picks a ton of run. Now, sure, Keel's a second-year guy, but he's really their only guy, right? And you're playing him 14 and 19 minutes? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know. Last year, I don't know. Miles McBride was playing like 35 minutes a game, right? You know, you had... Two years ago, whatever it was, it was Toppin and Emmanuel quickly playing 38 minutes a game. And, like, it was just not playing? I don't know. It does not make sense to me. Harley Brown is 6'4". He's another vet. I mean, his minutes have been solid. I think he's reasonable. Have Foster that started at the 5, played 22 minutes. I don't love the price point. Off the bench, nothing really for the Knicks. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but... This guy, again, there's not a lot of value. 13, 16 minutes, he's been productive when he's in support. I do have a little bit of interest in him just because there's not much value. I guess a little bit of interest in Garrett as well, but he's pricier um, at 6'2". Off the bench, he's been solid. So, yeah, my favorite play, I think, for the Knicks would be uh, Martin. I think he's going to be pretty popular because there's just not a lot of value in the slate. And, uh, yeah, so I think he's my favorite play there at that price. Moving on to the Magic, so... Magic, pretty gross as well. Pretty bad overall team. I did mention last video for the Magic how I like DJ Wilson at like 1%. I, I was like, all right, game one was an outlier game. Normally, he's north of a fantasy point per minute guy and a guy that can get a lot of block shots. What happened? Well, no ownership for DJ Wilson in 27 minutes for 37 fantasy points. 10 points, 8 boards, 4 assists, 5 blocks and a steal. So um, I do have interest in him again. The minutes have been pretty solid. Um, the top end guys, not as much. I mean, Anthony Black's 9-2, should play high 20s minutes. Jet Howard, Caleb Houston, I'll probably pass on. These guys are relatively score independent. Um, and I just don't love the price points on either of them. Uh, Kevin Harris did not play last game. Uh, they went to uh, uh, Elijah Hughes in the starting lineup. Hughes relatively score independent, but did play 26 minutes. He would be an okay value. Um, please check out the magic rotation. Is there anyone I would even consider off the bench? Let me see. Um. Oh. Probably not. Witherspoon played 16 minutes. Tiger Campbell played 13. Hill played 13. Baker played 13. I guess Baker's been the best of these backups so at 4.8k sure a little bit of interest and again we, we have to kind of consider guys like that right now because there's not a lot of value in this. talk about denver so denver's gonna run a pretty tight rotation it was also very weird the other game for the nuggets how they put up a good amount of points but somehow like no one did well i'll bring this up oh so, 93 points last game which is a pretty good amount for the summer league and they basically played seven-man rotation. They played the starters, plus Tyson, 24 minutes on the bench, and Sim, 17 minutes on the bench. Stanley and Smith both played sub-10 minutes. But somehow no one did good. Like, I kind of need someone to do a deep dive into that and explain that. Because I don't understand how the Nuggets put up 93 points with basically a seven-man rotation and, like, almost everyone busts. I don't understand how that happened. But I did. So, starters, once again, should be Watson, Pickett, Strother, Kamigate, and Gillespie. 
Tyson and Kamigate will split the center position. Kamigate's minutes have been ticking down. I would rather play Tyson if I had to pick between the two, but still don't love the price point on Tyson. Watson would probably be my favorite play. He was absolutely awful as chalk last slate. Again, I finished in ninth place in the big tournament a couple games ago with him. If he would have had a decent game, I maybe could have won the 10K, but no. 16, half a fantasy point a minute for Peyton Watson. How is that possible? <laughs> yeah, I think he's still a solid uh, spend up. Pickett, Strother, both reasonable plays. If I had to pick between the two, I would lean Pickett just because he's a bit of a higher floor. He's playing more of the point guard position. Five assists, back-to-back games. I'm um, going to who's also running some point, but his peripheral stats have not been amazing. So um, that's a little bit worrisome for me with uh, Colin Jelotti. Like, I just don't think I get to, and we mentioned Tyson. Um, now, Golden played like kind of the backup for game one. They said, we got news that Sims is going to play the backup game two. So I'm curious if we get the news again. Do they go back to Golden or do they go back again? Whichever one it is would have a bit of uh, interest in them for value. All right, let's talk about Utah. So Utah, we got some late news. Last slate that Ibachi was out due to lower uh, back spasms. We'll keep an eye on that if it's available for this game. Abachi's out, then I think Keontae George is probably my favorite spend up or one of my favorite spend ups. Um, just because he gets a pretty big bump there with Agbachi off the court. Really like Keontae George. Manchich also started, but he only played 23 minutes. So at that price point, I'll I'll pass. Mika Potter's price also went way up. He did play 29 minutes. I think he's still fine. We saw Ross. I believe they went to Ross and then hold. Oh, let me bring up the I think Ross started, and then I think they went to Hauser again. Uh, no, oh, Justice. Okay, so it was Ross, George, Potter, Justice, and some. Um, so Justice, 4-3, 22 minutes. If he starts again, sure, you can utilize him. Again, that's a cheap price point. Hauser played 19 off the bench. Kinsey played 20 off the bench. Juzag played 25 off the bench. Um, so... Juzeg at 6-1. If there is no Agbachi, I would have a little bit of interest in him. 26 real life points, though, a bit of an outlier, I will say. So, main interest definitely would be George if Agbachi misses. Um, and then some Anderson Potter. A um, little bit of interest in guys like Ross and Juzeg. And then Justice, Justice, if he starts again, I think would be a fair play. And then if Agbachi plays, I would assume they just move Justice to the bench and they start um, George, Agbachi, um, Ross, Potter, Samantha. All right, and finally, the Lakers. So, Lakers, I've been plugging and playing Castleton the last, what, two or three plays, whatever it's been. Well, now it's a little bit different. Castleton's price point, 8.6K. Um, that's up a bit. But honestly, I still like him. I still think he's probably my favorite play for the Lakers. He's been starting to play high 20s minutes, uh, 26, 28 minutes. Just a guy that can contribute in a lot of different ways. I like Castleton again, and he's playing the five for them. Max Christie was okay last game, but he's still getting a lot of run, a guy with the ceiling. I'm not as high on uh, Hood Shafino. I'll pass on him. Um, I would rather get to Christie or Castleton. And then you saw Swider and Hodge start last game. Um, Swider is 6K. He's relatively score independent, but he's making a shot to get on the ceiling. And then Hodge is 4'9". Um, not a guy that's going to be super, super productive, but is cheap. And like I said, there's just not a lot of value. So honestly, like it's gross, but we have to consider guys like that on this slate. Um, I'm not going to get to Killian Jones, not playing enough off the bench. Lewis played um, 20 minutes off the bench. I guess that's fine. Um, I, I think Scotty Pippins continues to be out. Again, he's been out for a while with that ankle injury. I guess we'll keep an eye. I'll, 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 swear, I'll search uh, Scotty Pippen news. But um, right now, I'm just under the assumption that he. And finally, Boston. So go over to Boston. Boston's been running a bit of a, a tighter rotation as well, which is good to see for the Summer League. So. We got to start with J.D. Davison. So he was, uh, basically, he shit his pants last game, right? He, uh, 207, 10 turnovers, right? And then two games ago, he literally shit his pants. <laughs> if you guys saw that, like, he literally did. Don't, go check Twitter. But, yeah, he literally shit his pants two games, two games ago. <laughs> um, so... I don't think anyone's going to play him, um, but the minutes have been there, and he's a guy that does have that floor with the assist. So uh, I do have a little bit of interest in him for tournaments. The minutes were, were pretty solid for him. Um, other uh, 
other starters. So they went to Champagne, the other one uh, being Walsh and Olek. So um, I do like the other uh, Champagne or Champagne, however you pronounce this name. Um, he was really solid last game. He was a big reason why I had a, a big night the other night. Um, a guy that, you know, can do it all, right? Now, last game, I would say a bit of an outlier. I don't think we're going to expect 21, 12, and 6, but the minutes have been solid on him. Walsh was a bit disappointing, but still saw solid minutes. I think he's a pretty solid option there in the range. I'm not getting to scrub, uh, not playing enough minutes off the bench. I'm not getting to Mulder, also not playing mi enough minutes off the bench. I think Bean's kind of just, like, fine. Played 22 and 21 minutes. A guy that, you know, can put the ball in the bucket, so just kind of, like, indifferent on him. Got these two like immobile bigs that are splitting the center position, Yoka Azubuki and Olek. Uh, both are fair value plays. Of course, I played Azubuki game one, does not start, doesn't have a good game. Game two, I fade. Better believe a double double. Okay, right? Woohoo! Happy for him. Yay, Yadoka Azubuki. Yeah. Uh, as Buki and Olek will split the center position, they're both okay values. You do have to consider these guys because, as I said, there's not a lot of value. So that is going to wrap it up for the team-by-team -team breakdown. Um, again, a lot of game theory going into this slate. Right? There are some teams that I'm worried about could shut down some guys, right? Have the Thunder. We're still, like, uncertain, even though it, it seems like a lot of the main guys are going to play again. But, like, I don't know that for sure. I'm worried about the Pacers. Um, I think the Nuggets are a team that could possibly shut down some guys. So, like, it, yeah, it's a little bit scary. Hopefully we get some news before lock. I just, that would be great if we could get some of this news lock. But um, yeah, so that's going to do it for the video, guys. Um, really do appreciate the support. Again, the support of the stream uh, earlier was crazy. So I want to thank you guys again for that. Enjoy the rest of your night. Hopefully uh, you guys can get in the cash tomorrow. And we'll see you all in the next video.